welcome or welcome back to Bolina's Pages in case you're new here. So a couple weeks ago I did a video that was reading like K-pop idols girl group edition and I made a battle of the K-pop girl groups and I I'm really happy that you liked the video and that the response was positive even if you didn't agree with my opinions and so as promised I brought the boy group edition here so I hope you enjoy this video and if you're not familiar with the format in my reading like celebrities book club I make sure to actually hide references so throughout my reviews I will have references to the songs that the group has so please watch out for them and then tell me how many you got in the comments all reviews are spoiler free so that you can absolutely watch and enjoy this video What's more heartwarming than a group of skeletons who are too poor to afford a burial and so they join together and they make one happy family and live together for the rest of eternity? Nothing. <laughs> The answer is nothing. The Seventh Day is one of the grimmest, darkest, most despondent stories I've ever read. I mean, it's a pretty hard-hitting commentary on materialism and how sometimes we get so confused by our desires to have something that we end up with a lot of regret towards the end of our life. Because in death we are all equal. And yet, it's also a strangely uplifting and heartwarming story of a man who's too poor to afford a burial and so instead he decides to spend his life reconnecting with people he knows. The main character Yang Fei enters the world in a fairly dramatic way. He's saved from trains because his mother left him on the train tracks by a kind rail worker and raised as his own son and so you would expect that well he was destined to be saved that means that there's a purpose for him in this world but actually he is this very mediocre and average man who has no Nobody left to mourn him when he dies. I know this is a pretty dark book even from the description alone but the literary descriptions and the haunting atmosphere and even the way that the characters reunite and that they're so unique and so different but they're average in all of their grievances accumulated I just I fell in love with this book and the way that it managed to give such a positive message like even if you feel left out in life there will come a point where you invariably feel like you're needed. Especially the passages where Yang Fei was looking for his father after he died that was some of the most heartwarming and touching stuff that I've ever read. It really moved me on a very emotional level to see someone reconnecting with such an important person after all these years. Breadth of imagination that the author had was astonishing and the idea was just so incredibly original that I could even forgive the somewhat trite characters because the female characters in particular were nothing really new or even positive because the women were all very beautiful and they were just using their beauty to manipulate and it just doesn't give off good vibes to have this in our day and century like we've been telling women that they're beautiful and that they only got to where they are because of their beauty for centuries so having this in a book that was so original and you just brought me back down. <laughs> it wasn't so original there because none of the characters went beyond that archetype. The structure did make it a bit hard to follow, it wasn't very linear, it felt like we were going around in circles sometimes, but oddly enough it did manage to hit right home even though it tackled such heavy themes as like poverty and corruption and everything was really dark and characters were dying all around. The way that it hit right home was because of the joy in the little things, like the characters still found happiness in just enjoying something as small as like the fog or like the morning atmosphere so it was very nice in that regard and although I wouldn't say that this is a new favorite because some of the things could have been cleaned up I would say that even if you eliminated some of the characters that are idea characters so just characters for the sake of an idea I, I think this book might have managed to lose some of its like mag magic inside so I would still cue this book exactly as it is it's four stars for me Lizard was my first Banana Yoshimoto book, but I suppose it's not accurate to call it a book. It's a collection of short stories, and all of the short stories revolve around love with an element of like magic and esotericism. <laughs> you're, I guess you're sensing a theme throughout this video. The plot is pretty much similar, it's just about people who are in love and in love in different ways. So I would say that 
I have been seeing Banana Yoshimoto all over the place quite a lot and I would say that this is probably her like typical themes even though I don't have much experience so I guess that if you liked her other books this will also have resonance with you. I like that even though the setting was distinctly very much in Tokyo the stories all felt timeless so it wasn't like a 90s love or a 2000s love it was just love and like yes there were people who were accept obsessed with weird things and people who made like religious random statues and it, it was weird and unsettling and just very creative in a distinctly Japanese way. I love Japanese fiction for that. So I do think that you would enjoy it even though the love stories didn't feel as if it was anything that was particularly mind-blowing or that really struck a chord with me. And when I say that like oh it wasn't the love wasn't anything special i could definitely see why yoshimoto was so polarizing in the book community because this can only be described as well hashtag first world problems <laughs> because there's a man who is literally so angsty because his wife spends a lot of time picking out shampoo and so he just decides to ride around on the train and come back never come back and start a new life like there's just a lot of these things there and I guess that it would be pretty annoying especially if you're looking for literature that has like I don't want to say deeper problems but I guess that that is the case. I did enjoy the topics that the characters discussed though. I liked that they were well like taboo topics but they never made a big deal out of it. It, it wasn't like oh look we're being so rebellious so we're talking about it like we shouldn't be. No it was just genuine understanding from like the characters in the relationship so even though it was pretty dark it did feel again comfortable and very cozy not me spending the entire video saying that dark books are comfort books my favorite story was definitely lizard the namesake of the collection it's basically about a young woman who has a lizard tattooed on her leg and she has these magical dark healing powers so she can heal anyone with just the touch of her very cold lizard like hands like i thought it was a very intriguing premise and i also enjoyed dreaming dreaming of kimchi uh the passage about societal expectations and how you can't get out of them because they just like obscure the, obscure your vision even if you can't see it i also thought that was brilliant so even though there were some gems in this collection overall i did think that it didn't really touch me or impress me that much even though the writing was beautiful so i would give this collection three stars but it no me by no means discouraged me from trying her other work Okay, real talk, no floater. I don't want to be giving this book fake love just because so many people from BTS liked it and so many people worldwide did because I just don't think that Almond managed to live up to the hype. The premise of this novel was like nothing I've ever read before and that's saying something because I did have a phase where I just constantly read YA so seeing such a theme and especially considering that I've read other books around like mental health I do think that this was quite an achievement because the plot was like fantastic. I have no words to describe it. The main character is Amygdala is very small and so he can't really feel emotions the way that other people do. As in like, for example, he can be in a really harmful situation but next time he'll get in the same situation and don't care because his body won't register the fear and so his mom and his grandma they write him notes like oh if a car is coming towards you you have to dodge like this is danger or um in, in social situations try and smile but don't smile at random moments like be sad when other people are sad be honest but not too honest they craft this like persona for him in an effort to get him to fit in into society but it's still um, very much a persona for him like he doesn't actually feel these emotions so he invariably ends up sticking out and like being the outsider the concept was fire the writing was fire the very first pages i thought that this will for sure be my my new favorite book because the way it introduced everything in the writing it was great and it really did manage to stick with that like rushed and like very attention grabbing pace from start to end however i do think that the end was perhaps a little bit too rushed because it just ended up turning tragedy on tragedy it was a little bit melodramatic at times so i wouldn't say that it managed to particularly get round to the overall ending very well also, even though I like the original concept to begin with, I think the end just managed to somehow ruin and sully that for me too. Because the whole idea of like the main neurodivergent character who's not like ordinary people because of a mental illness is 
made better by the power of friendship. Like, it just feels a little bit too Disney for my liking. And of course, he recognizes all the truth of the world when he makes a selfless self-sacrifice. Are we really saying that you need to, like, almost die to improve? Because I don't think, like, it was his problem to begin with. Like, yes, of course, I I'm happy that he got better and started feeling more. Like, he got a little bit better and started feeling more. But I just can't help but think that saying that, okay, like, I'm happy he went through all of the trauma for that is a good thing to say. And again, the trope of like, oh, his best friend is a guy nobody else understands, so like, they perfectly fit together was just a little bit overused as well. And I do know that this is YA and there's supposed to be this like, happy, miraculous ending, but I thought it was so revolutionary because it touched on like, very much darker themes, like his mother and grandma getting hurt and like the like the little the little intricacies of family relationships but then when it just went off the rails and back to that conventional like let's quickly drag everything around to a happy end it did lose a reader in me i would still recommend it because i do think this will easily get you out of a slump and the concept is well worth the read and of course the descriptions of books because the main character's mom has a bookstore a used bookstore so it's 3.25 stars for me but it just didn't impress me as much as i hoped it would Human Acts was actually on the bts list too and i just had to in include this book because I, I don't have the words to describe it. It took my breath away. If you do already follow me, then you know that on this channel I absolutely talk about Hong Kong. Every English lesson, in fact, I sit to my fully Korean, I'm half Korean friend, and we sometimes talk about Korean authors, and I try and persuade her that she needs to read Hong Kong in the original, uh, in the original Korean, because even though the English translation still absolutely took my heart, broke it, shattered it into pieces, and then put it back together just so that I could live and recommend this book. The or original and the translation are never ever quite the same, so I am so jealous of her that she gets to experience this masterpiece in the original too. This book is all about the Gwangju uprising, so students protested the dictatorship in Korea, and then the army came and literally gunned all of them down. Students in a small city, obliterated by an entire army. Like, they didn't need to shoot everyone twice, but they did. And this is, of course, like an unspeakable tragedy in Korean history. And the way that Hong Kong addresses it by taking on a more human side, and first of all, the fact that she actually, like, promotes talking about this history, like she leaves this legacy behind that people remember that this event happened, that we must never ever forget, was just, I have no words and I genuinely cannot talk about this book here right now because I think it would take away from the magic of it all because Han Kang manages with her concise yet emotional writing to to present us with something truly special that explores the dirty and grimy sides while also having this like beautiful element to it and when she talks about all the violence she never once takes away from the violence with like the more beautiful parts instead they enhance each other and make this absolutely enchanting narrative that's not enchanting in the like usual pleasant sense but it just you you can't get away from it you have to keep on reading and actually, Hong Kong herself knows people that were personally impacted by this tragedy, like this is her town as well. And I think she did just the marvelous job of not giving into sensationalism and having like this book that was just full on violence, but highlighting this idea that actually, even though the students were gunned down, that people can still carry like revolutionary ideas even in such dark times. And of course, the found family trope, like, it's it's an absolute easy five stars and the only thing that was w missing for me were probably the voices of the army like the other side that had to kill innocent students but other than that it's one of my favorite books ever and i hope that even if you hate me after watching this video because you don't like the the boy group that i picked you still read this book because it really deserves your attention